Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, the previous lecture on uh, on the item which I called Einstein view was about adding velocities. So basically, we had one frame and then another frame which is moving along x-axis uh, of the first frame, and there is a velocity of the whole frame and there is an object which is moving in the same direction along the x uh, axis with some speed u and I have derived the formula of speed of this object in this main system so to speak I call it alpha now what's important here is that the whole beta system is moving along x-axis and the object itself moving along x-axis and that's how the law of addition of um, speeds is basically derived here relative in relativity theory of relativity now what if the object moves in some other direction not exactly along the x-axis well, obviously, we can split the speed into three components, component along x, along y, and along z, and do the calculations separately. And that's what this lecture is about. I would like to talk about directions along the y-axis and along the x-axis, how these uh, speed additions actually look like for in, in formulas. So, that's what this lecture is all about today. Now, this lecture is part of the whole course, actually, which is called Relativity for All. And that's why this particular item I called Einstein's view is. Before that was a Galilean view, then there are some other items, etc. So, it's the whole course. It's presented on unizor.com, um, totally free website no advertisement, no strings attached and what's important, the same website contains uh, two prerequisite, I would say, courses Mass for teens and Physics for teens basically directed to the advanced high school level maybe a little bit more than that now the relativity is probably even more advanced course uh, I still try to do it as understandable for everybody who is familiar with math and physics of uh, high school course. Um, so um, don't hesitate to to take this course because you know it's not nothing special basically. Okay, um, what else? Well, the prerequisite course courses are. Um, they contain lots of problems to solve, exercises. What's important is that every lecture, it's not only the video lecture, as you might actually catch on YouTube or some, somewhere else, but also there is a full textual part. You will see on the same screen, this is the video and this is the uh, textual part. Textual part is basically like a textbook. So it's not like notes, some very short notes. No, it's it's a full explanation which is as good as the, uh, or maybe even better <laughs> than whatever I'm talking about during the lecture. I might forget something. Um, so basically I do recommend you to use the website unizor.com for both the video and the textual part and I don't know what's better to read first and then watch the lecture or watch the lecture and then read first depends on you but if you have something like a, a problem solving lecture it's better to read it first without solutions which is sometimes presented sometimes not and uh, try yourself all these problems whatever is presented and only then watch the lecture where I usually present the solution okay back to theory of relativity so let's just assume as before that we have an alpha frame 
that is supposed to be alpha. So we have alpha frame. And we have a beta frame, which is moving along the um, capital X, capital Y, capital Z, lowercase x, lowercase y, lowercase z. So it moves the beta frame is moving with a speed v along the x-axis of the alpha frame. Now, at the moment, time equals zero, which is the same for both systems. We have them completely coinciding, but uh, generally speaking, the beta uh, frame is moving retaining the parallelism of the axis okay so it's very very natural kind of um, arrangement of two frames moving relative to uh, one uh, against another first they coincide at moment t, t zero but basically speaking it moves with a constant uniform speed v along the x-axis now based on that we have already derived um, so-called Lorentz transformation of coordinates um, where speed of light is involved etc so if you missed that particular um, lecture it's one of the previous within the same uh, Einstein's view uh, item in the course so I assume that Lorentz transformation is a known thing and I will definitely use it okay now now we assume we have some kind of a point object which is moving with certain speed and direction uniformly moving let's just simplify our, our job uniformly moving uh, along some direction in beta system the beta system is the one which is has lowercase coordinates and it's moving relative to alpha system with the speed loop. so my question is how this um, the speeds of this particular object in the beta system if we know them how they will transform if I view the same object from the alpha system obviously using Lorentz transformation of coordinates so it's a very simple exercise the only thing is it involves just you know very accurate um, writing if you wish and some derivative basically so the task is obvious I know the movement of this thing in the beta system and the speed vector of speed in the beta system looks like u beta x u beta y and u beta z components constant components because this is a uniform movement so this is the vector of movement x y and z coordinates in the beta system what i do need i need to find out alpha uh, components of the same vector question mark that's my task and again if it's only movement along the x-axis so if u beta y and u beta z are equal to zero in the lecture which precedes this in the same Einstein's view topic I have derived the value of u alpha x and you can basically go there and find it out but I will probably repeat it very briefly here as well so now I am in a more general case when these are not equal to zero so the question is what should I do well the answer is pretty simple and it's exactly the same approach as I used in the lecture about uh, only x coordinate not equal to zero so first of all we have to write the equations of motion in the beta system now I think I have to assume that 
uh, the position of, again, for simplicity, the, the position of this object at time zero is in the origin of coordinate. That just makes my, my job easier, but it doesn't really make any kind of simplifica simplification. So what is my movement of the object in the beta system? What are x, y, and z coordinates? Well, if I know that it's a uniform movement with components of the speed, constant components of the speed are this, so basically this is u b x times t, u b y times t, and u beta z times t. That's what uniform movement is. Constant speed times the time, and that gives me the coordinates. Great. Now, now let's go back to um, Lorentz transformation of coordinates. So I will transform x, y, and z from beta system to alpha system, knowing the formulas for Lorentz transformation, which I'm going to write here. So I will ri write first the basic formulas, and obviously I would like to use my previous t plus v x divided by c square square root 1 minus v square c square. So this is how time is transformed from lowercase t to capital T, from beta system to alpha system. Now the x coordinate, this is capital X, which is alpha x, is x plus v t divided by square root minus v square c square. So the denominator is the same everywhere y is equal to y and z is equal to z. Okay. Since my movement of the beta system is along x-axis, y and z coordinates are exactly the same of the any point in beta system as in alpha system. But time and x coordinates are obviously changing. And these are the formulas. Now, using this well, let me just substitute this to x, y, and z here, and I will have basically the representation of x, y, and z uh, and, and time t of uh, alpha coordinates uh, as functions of only one parameter, the time, because the speed is constant, right? So the same thing would look like t is equal to t plus v, v is the speed of the beta system relative to alpha system along x-axis, times x coordinate which is u beta x times t divided by this square root. Now x would be equal to x is instead of x now I can put explicit u beta x times t plus v t divided by the same square root. Now y is equal to y which is u beta y t and z is equal u beta z t. Right? So these are positions x, y, and z, and the time t, expressed in terms of uh, lowercase t, time in beta coordinates. Now, what should I actually find out? I need to know the speeds, uh, the components of the speeds in the alpha system. So I have to find, basically, um, u alpha x, and what is basically the speed? 
speed is the first derivative of coordinate by time, which is supposed to be dx divided by dt, right? That's the derivative of position by time, and all of them are in alpha system. That's why this is alpha component of the x. So this is x component, y component would be d y by dt, again, all capital, and uh, z component would be d z or dt. So that's what I have to find out. How? Well, very, very simply, again, using exactly the same methodology as in the uh, lecture about x coordinate only without y and z. So what I did was I was using a simple formula. It's a, it's a compound uh, derivation. If you have a compound function, let's say square root of 2 plus x uh, cube. How do you find its derivation? First, it's supposed to be this one as some kind of a y. So it's square root of y. First you have to derive by y, which is derivative of square root is, I think it's 1 over 2 square roots, uh, maybe with a minus sign, and then derive multiplied by derivation of y by x, which is derivation of uh, derivative of 2 plus x squared is 2x. So that's how you do it. This is a compound kind of a function. This is exactly the same thing. So if x is a function of t and t, capital T, and capital T is a function of lower k t, the derivation by lower k, uh, lowercase t is derivation by capital T and then derivation of t by t. From which I can have this one as dx divided by dt is equal to this divided by this, right? So dx by dt divided by dt by dt. Both of them are derivative by lowercase t. And we can very easily have it because all of these functions are linear function of lowercase t. Okay? So that's why we can just put very simply dx by dt is equal to okay derivative of uh, capital X by lowercase t is this u beta x plus it's a linear function by t so the derivative is this divided by square root of y minus v square minus c square and this is what we have already um, obtained in the lecture when only x component was involved so this is a known formula that was a lecture, preceded lecture to this one. Now dy per dt is equal to the derivative of uh, this by, by, by t is just u beta y divided by dt um, oh wait a moment, I think I forgot to divide uh, okay, I forgot to divide. Have I? Yes, of course. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I did obtain this formula, but I did it incorrectly. You have to have this one, which which uh, which is basically what I just said, divided by um, derivative of this one. So the square root will cancel out. So you will have u beta x plus v divided by uh, numerator, sorry, which is 1 plus uh, v times u 
beta x. By the way, this is supposed to be divided by c square, am I right? Yeah, of course. I just missed it. Okay. Um, divided by c square. That's the formula, which was derived in the previous lecture. Sorry about that. Now, this one, again, dx for dt is this one divided by this square. Okay, the square root will, will always cancel as far as I understand. So you will have this one divided by this. You always divide by square root will always cancel out when we divide one derivative by another. Now dz or dt would be again dz by lowercase t, which is u beta z. divided by um, of course this square and this square and what we have here the denominator one plus v u v x divided by c square. I think I'm right now. So let me check again. dx by dt is supposed to be dx by dt, which is u b x plus v divided by square root. This is a constant. It's not depend it's not dependent on t. So t is only in the numerator, so it will be sum of this divided by square. Divided by derivative of uh, capital T by lowercase t. So square root also will be here, and here it will be cancelled, and e 1 plus this divided. Yes, so that's correct. Now, um, y is different y doesn't have this square root, so we, there is nothing to cancel. So we will have this in the numerator, which is this, and then the whole, both numerator and, and denominator from t. Numerator will be in the denominator of this, which is derivative by t would be 1 plus v, divided by c square. And denominator of this will go to numerator. It will be turned around because it's a division, and you will have here, and the similar thing with this. So these are the formulas of transformation of coordinates from beta system to alpha system for any object which is move, which is moving with constant speed with all three components, x, y, and z. This one is for x, it's special because it's exactly the same direction as beta system is moving. These are look-alike, basically, and these are transforming the uh, y and z components of the beta system into y and z components of alpha frame, alpha system. So, it's not easy. I mean, the formulas don't really look easy. Um, by the way, in, in Galilean system, this would only be for x because uh, in the Galilean system you can probably consider speed of light to be infinite and then these formulas will be converted into Galilean if c is if c is infinite the whole thing is disappearing this is disappearing this is disappearing and you will have that the x component is the sum of x component of the object in the beta system plus speed of the beta system itself relatively to i and y and z components 
would be exactly the same because this will be zero so it's just one and this will be zero so it's just one so you will have only so the y and z speed will be the same and the x component will be just addition of the speed that's the Galilean transformation that's the Galilean principle of adding the, um, the velocities but in the relativity in the theory of relativity it's much more complex because the C is not infinite. Speed of light is the maximum possibly achievable and to basically accommodate this property of the universe um, the formulas are getting a little bit more complex. However, there is one um, simple case which I would like to point out. What if the um, object is moving in the beta system only along the y-axis? So, u beta x is equal to zero and u beta z is equal to zero. What happens then? Well, if u beta z is equal to zero, then this is zero. And what's important is that um, dx for dt would in this case would, it would be equal to only v. There is no x component moving only along the y axis, okay? Now, what would be dy by dt? That's important. That would be u b x u beta x would be equal to zero, so this component disappears, and only the numerator u beta y times square root of one minus v square c square. That's important. This multiplier is important and dz is equal to 0 to so if the movement is only along the y-axis then the coordinate of the x would be only related to the movement of an entire beta system which is moving along x system now y system would have uh, y direction would have this particular multiplier as a correction factor. So the speed will be smaller in alpha than it is in beta along the y-axis. So along the beta y-axis it's only u beta y but along the uh, alpha system the coordinates would be slightly less and the greater the speed of light, uh, the speed of object sorry, the greater the speed of beta system relative to the alpha system the um, the greater to zero will be this particular um, expression, right? so the perceived by alpha observer speed along the y-axis of the object um, would be diminished with faster moving beta system. The faster it moves out, the smaller seems to be from the alpha observer um, the speed along the y-axis. That's very important. Now if vice versa the z component is not equal to zero, only z and all others, it will be basically the same thing. This would be zero and this would be um, u beta z multiplied by the same multiplier. So that's how speed is transformed from one um, uh, frame to another. Obviously frames are considered to be inertial and uh, the beta is moving relatively to alpha. So from the beta speed we are converting to alpha speed. And these are formulas, this one which was before the previous lecture, but it's the same methodology, that's why I decided to put it in. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I never remember these formulas, to tell you the truth. Whenever I need it, I just go to either my lecture or any, any, any article. But anyway, it's important to understand what actually is going on in these pr uh, particular cases when only one coordinate is um, is using is used uh, along the movement. So these formulas 
are much simpler for y and for z and we might actually use it for some other purposes okay uh, I do suggest you if you didn't read the textbook for this because it doesn't contain some small errors which I make on the way um, other than that uh, good luck thank you